a desperate gamble by a company in trouble. They were facilitating activities supporting criminal organisations. Crown broke laws that try to stop criminals and terrorists moving money. New court documents expose the casino giant's attempt to argue what became the third largest corporate fine in Australian history. Crown Resorts will be allowed to pay off a massive $450 million fine over the next two years. With evidence of egregious law breaking and big fines from state regulators, Crown raised the potential of bankruptcy if forced to pay it up front. The Crown Resorts Group does not have available cash to make such a payment, Chief Financial Officer Alan McGregor stated. The company would need to get a loan and I am uncertain as to the outcomes of such negotiations. Regulator Austrac agreed to an interest-free payment plan, giving Crown essentially a 10% discount. It's like someone who gets copped for speeding pleased that they can't afford to pay the fine because they've been copped three times already that week. Scandalous behaviour at Crown was uncovered by the media and later confirmed at multiple inquiries and royal commissions. It happened on our watch. So-called high-risk customers, some with known links to criminal organisations, brought in $2.3 billion of revenue. The casino group paid almost a billion dollars in commissions to people and programs that lured these customers, entertained them with golf, jets and travel, made $155 million in profit from these dubious customers, but had to write off some of their bad debts. No other business in Australia gets treated like this. And uh, here's a novel thought. Why not treat all businesses as equal before the law? Having facilitated money laundering, consorted with criminal gangs, dodged tax and lied to regulators, Crown says it's made a fresh start under new owners. It's no longer listed on the stock exchange, meaning this is likely the last detailed look inside its finances and how it does business. The house never loses.